In the over 100 year history of the NFL, there have been some iconic revenge games where a team traded away a player or let them walk in free agency only for that player to come back and completely destroy them. Deion Sanders coming back to the Georgia Dome and getting a pick six as a member of the 49ers. Joe Montana throwing two touchdowns and leading the Chiefs to a victory against the 49ers. Brett Favre coming back to Lambeau Field for the first time and throwing four touchdowns. There have been some great moments of players getting revenge on their former team. This is not one of them. This is the story of the worst revenge game in NFL history. First, we need some context as to how we got to this point. In 1970, the Denver Broncos were a bad football team. They finished the season at 5-8-1, finishing with the worst record in the AFC West. Despite having a defense that finished in the top half of the league and was a top five rushing defense, and despite having a strong running game led by Pro Bowl halfback Floyd Little, Denver faltered heavily at the end of the season, winning just one of their final nine games. And the big reason for that was lethargic quarterback play. They had three guys play a quarterback that year and couldn't get anything going. Their combined passer rating that season was 44.5, which is just five points better than if you did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. Bronco quarterbacks threw just 11 touchdowns that season, which was tied for the second worst total in all of football, and threw 28 interceptions, also tied for the second worst total in all of football. They knew that if they wanted to be competitive in 1971, that they needed a quarterback badly. And so, when the 1971 NFL Draft rolled around, the Broncos tried to upgrade the position with the trade. On the other line of the phone was the Green Bay Packers. To understand why the Packers were on the line, we have to go back a bit. In 1967, the Green Bay Packers started thinking of a plan to draft Bart Starr's successor. Starr was coming off of an incredible 1966 campaign, where he made the Pro Bowl, was named a first-team All-Pro for the first and only time in his career, won the Super Bowl, led the league in completion percentage, and was named the MVP of the league. But he was going to be 33 years old by the time the 1967 season began. Now while that might not seem old now, we need some context because back then, no quarterback played past their mid-30s. Arguably the three greatest quarterbacks in NFL history at the time were Sid Luckman, Otto Graham, and Norm Van Brocklin. They all retired before their 35th birthday. Because of the precedent, Green Bay didn't think that Starr had too much left in the tank. So with their first round pick in the 1967 NFL Draft, they drafted San Diego State quarterback Don Horn. Don Horn has suddenly become Green Bay's hope for the present as well as the future. Tall, strong-armed, and quick, Horn has all the tools to be a winning quarterback and lacks only experience. Green Bay initially had high hopes and praise for Horn. Vince Lombardi said that he was handpicked to be the successor, and that he was ready to play right now. Bart Starr had similar praise, saying that Horn was good enough to play on the first string. And after a 1969 campaign, where he went 4-1 as the starter, and had a five touchdown game against the Cardinals to close out the season, it was looking like Green Bay had their future quarterback. Instead, he crashed and burned in 1970 a dismal season where he backed up Starr followed. He started one game, which came against the Colts. He went 10 for 23 with less than 100 yards passing, no touchdowns, and four interceptions in a losing effort. In total, he had two touchdowns and 10 interceptions that season. And with Green Bay getting a new head coach in 1971, replacing Phil Bengston with Dan Devine, it seemed like the Don Horn succession plan was all but over. And that takes us back to the 1971 NFL Draft, when the Broncos and Packers put together a trade. The team swapped first round picks and players. For the Packers, they were getting defensive end Alden Roche, who was Denver's second round pick in 1970. And for the Broncos, they were getting the guy that they thought was their quarterback of the future. They acquired Don Horn. I was able to stumble upon this article that praised the trade for the Broncos saying that no matter how the deal turns out, it can't be any worse than past blunders. That statement is hilarious in hindsight. The guy they gave up, Roche, played six seasons with the Packers, starting 73 games for them. He was a solid defensive lineman. And Don Horn? 
Well, let's just say he wasn't good. And with that, we finally come to the revenge game. September 26, 1971. The Broncos are traveling to Milwaukee to take on the Green Bay Packers in Week 2. The Broncos tied their first game and the Packers lost their first game. So considering the fact that neither team won their first game of the season, this felt like a must win for both sides. Don Horn was getting the start for the Broncos and had a chance to show the Packers what they were giving up. Instead, what transpired was just about the worst possible revenge game of all time. Horn threw no touchdowns and six interceptions. His passer rating was 26.4. Again, for some perspective, if you did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play, your passer rating would be higher than what Horns was on that day. The Broncos lost the game handily, losing it 34-13, and the lone touchdown scored came with less than a minute left in the fourth quarter in garbage time, after Horn got benched for Steve Ramsey. Broncos head coach Lou Saban was so upset by the performance that he called it the team's worst performance since he became the head coach in 1967. And Horn was quite blunt as well, saying that this was the worst game he ever had in football. Denver seems to have all the ingredients to be a winner, but for the second straight week, Saban has seen his quarterback, Don Horn, throw the key interception. 10 in the last two games, and you better believe he's getting tired of that too, considering Horn was supposed to be trumpeting Denver out of the woods. Horn finished the season with three touchdowns and 14 interceptions, and would not throw a single pass for the Broncos after that 1971 season. He bounced around the league for a few seasons in the early 70s, but was out of the NFL by the end of the 1974 season. Sometimes, teams immediately regret giving up a player. And sometimes, that player proves their former team right. This 1971 game, however, was perhaps the biggest stamp of validation in NFL history. The Packers got it right. Be sure to like this video and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See so, yeah, how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.